thank you very much for having uh, us here. Uh, I don't know if all of you were uh, last night at the gallery. Uh, this is a piece that we did uh, with Alexandra, Alexandra Stratimirovic, she's here with us, and uh, in collaboration with Targetti. Uh, it was presented for the first time in a lighting building in Frankfurt in uh, 2006. So I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the piece uh, that some of you saw last night. Uh, but, but in the first part, I would like to talk a bit more generally about color and light. And uh, ah. uh, yeah, I need this. So in order to talk about light and color, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow this Joseph Albers thinking for a while. And uh, let's forget totally about light and color. Forget about everything so far. And let's think about water buckets. So you have a bucket of water. You have a bucket with cold water. You have another one with warm water. And you have one in the middle with intermediate, intermediate temperature of lukewarm water. If you put your hand in the first bucket of cold water, and your other hand in the bucket with the warm water, and then together you take them out and you put them in the lukewarm water. You will notice, obviously, that one hand is going to be feeling cold, and the other one is going to be feeling warm. So let's say that these two square boxes, coming back to light and color, which are of identical color, are your hands. And instead of putting your hands into water, let's put them to color and see what it happens. It's not a new image. The, the, the two boxes are exactly the same. They are of the exact same color. And as you can see, the box on my right hand side is looks quite darker compared to the one on uh, this side, which is in blue, which, which looks quite lighter. And that's an interesting property of color, because we always have to think about color in context, and in the context that we actually see it. So again, identical boxes of the same color, Can you see the difference? Yes, a little bit. OK. So let's see now the differences in shades and tones. These are five identical uh, horizontal, uh, vertical bars of the same color. They do look differently in context. So, line, put it in context of another color, totally different thing. And then you can also get a lot of space illusions, space illusions with color. Like here, one of the first bars seems to be quite closer to us, and the top one seems to be a bit further away. So, and lastly, it really depends, uh, sometimes it depends on how you see color in sequence. So if you look for a long time at a certain color and then you look to another color, you, you're going to have a different visual impression. So if we could dim the lights for this one, but you really have to stare at the black dot for half a minute or so. I don't know if it's going to work in this room, but just stare at the black dot without moving your eyes anywhere else. And let's do that for half a minute. And then I'm going to change into another slide. And we'll see if we get an after image of bluish green. But don't move your eyes. Just keep them on the black dot.
you get it. Okay, so that's quite interesting. Another interesting property of color, when you see one color and then you see the next one. So, a little bit of research, uh, a little bit of history. Uh, when we uh, <coughs> decided to work on this project with Alexandra, we were very much, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, it was very charming to go through some of the old color wheels uh, and some of the uh, color research that we, we've seen so far, that we know so far, that it existed in the past. So I'm just going to go uh, quite quickly through some of the history of color research, which was our basic inspiration to do this piece. Uh, it was a loose inspiration. We don't want to do something that correlates exactly to what we're going to see. But uh, it was uh, very interesting to, 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 to go through these, older, through these older color wheels for us. So uh, basically, that's Newton, 1704, uh, a book about light, color, and optics. And there we can see one of the first circular arrangements of color, of spectral colors. And uh, you all know, obviously, the story with the prism and daylight and how it gets separated in different colors, divided in different colors. And this is the wheel. A few years later, Boutet, a French painter, uh, illustrated this uh, in these kind of wheels. As we move on, Harris, Moses Harris, 1766, uh, in this color wheel, we'll see a lot of tones, which is quite interesting compared to the other ones. Schiffer Müller, uh, 1772, an Austrian guy, a basic color wheel, again, illustrating different shades. Basically, illustrating different hues, not shades. Uh, it was quite interesting that uh, Meyer depicted Lichtenberg's work uh, at 1775, which was a triangular, not a color wheel. And it's quite interesting at the time that things start to get three-dimensional for two dimensions. So from this triangular shape, then Lambert at 1772 did this kind of pyramid illustrating different shades of white, oh, 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 different tones of color, sorry. Goethe, the famous work uh, on color, he associated color with qualities like uh, good or uh, schön, or which is nice. And uh, Sowerby, his work on primary colors, 1810. Moving on to Otto Runge, which uh, here, he, he 1810 again, uh, he has a, a sphere. He depicts the color with a sphere, and the two poles are the one uh, white, the other one black. And uh, we can see some uh, sections of the sphere uh, at the lower ends. And Manso, the guy that was relatively known for, uh, quite known actually, for, his, for the Mansell color system, uh, they say that uh, he was... Uh, uh, he, so he knew Otto Runge's wor work, and then he did his own sphere. But then he, he realized that in order to, to depict colors in a, in a geometrical shape, because our perception doesn't uh, work equally or uniformly uh, in different uh, saturation of different hues, uh, he, had, he, he ended up with this color solid in order to depict uh, in order to compensate for our uh, visual perception. So you see that some colors have like a longer saturation uh, points, whereas so some others have shorter ones. And this is the CIE chromaticity chart, which is like really is the most scientific of the previous one, uh, and it correlates to, 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 to our visual system. Uh, uh, after some experiments that they did in 1930, uh, and you can see the different wavelengths. So, there are a lot of other color models uh, today, 
but uh, this was our initial research and talk before doing this piece. Another thing which is interesting is that, for example, if I'm not mistaken, and Google Translate is all right, and I checked with Anda, this is red in Romanian, which is interesting that when you say red in Romanian, most probably within Europe, we understand the same thing. But if we get the same of the world, do we understand exactly the same? So this is the study of linguists uh, that uh, uh, study color semantics to try to understand what happens with language and color and visual impression and communication of that. So moving on to our piece. Uh, this was just a brief introduction about color. We cannot go into detail right now. And uh, our piece is not about science nor uh, linguistics, obviously. Uh, it's an artistic piece. So it was very crucial to us to, to, to make something that relates to color but in an artistic way. So we generated a minimal and basic environment before adding light to it by taking shapes, uh, the shape of the cycle or of the wool and uh, having layers of it, concentric layers, uh, the one uh, on top of the other, and put it in a square, all in painted white color. And the whole piece is made in uh, three parts, it's a triptych. So we can see connections from the one to the other. Each cycle takes a different hue, saturation, and brightness. So it forms a different color compared to, to the next one and to the next one. And uh, there are 100 steps, 100 images that we programmed into this piece uh, that you see in the installation here in Timisvara. So the piece can, can be observed from, from afar, where one can see the relationships between sequential or complementary contrasts of color. In this slide, for example, you can see that, as you know from the ori original shape of the color wheel, that the, the center point is further back. Here it seems to be closer to us. There is some kind of space illusion ha happening with, with color and light within the piece. So then we wanted with Alexandra for people to, to come closer to the piece as well because we, we originally we made this as a, as a piece that can be observed by two points, a, f a, f a point that is further away and a point w which is quite close to the piece, almost in front of each wheel where one can get chromatically adapted to each individual wheel. So the far view, and then the views that you can get if you come really up close. Sorry. Some white tones. So, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to run till 10th of October at the gallery. So, you're welcome to uh, see it if you're interested. F oh, 15th, 15th. Uh, and, uh, yeah, um, I think there is some kind of minimalism in this piece, we, we, which, uh, which I think uh, is quite interesting. I mean, we're we are not scientists, we're not trying to depict color. 
uh, in a scientific way, nor we are into color semantics. Uh, and we, we hope that you really gonna enjoy it. Uh, so that's about it, I guess. And I don't know if Alexandra has something to add because she's here, she's gonna give the next wonderful lecture. Thank you very much.